Hi, my name is Natalie Cressman. Um, I'm a trombonist and composer based in New York City. I'm here at Lesson Face headquarters today. One of the things that's hardest for um, horn players with limited experience improvising is keeping the form when they start to solo. And I've gotten a lot of requests on how to practice learning the form of a tune. Um, and as a trombone, since the trombone is kind of a bass clef instrument, the first place I like to start is by learning the roots or coming up with a bass line. So we're going to do all of this over a very simple 12-bar blues, um, which kind of is cut up into three different phrases. The first four bars are all an F7, which means the arpeggio that you would draw from the root up would be F, A, C, and E flat. So there's a major third and a flat seven, which makes it a dominant chord. And then in the fifth bar, this is the second phrase of the blues, we're going to have two measures of B flat seven, which is the same chord quality, but built up from B flat. So that would be B flat, D, F, and A flat. And then after those two bars, we'll go back to kind of the home key. This is an F blues. So then we'll be back on F7 for two measures. And then the last, the third and final phrase, um, we're going to go to the five chord now, which in F is C7. So that's C, E, G, B flat for just one measure. Then we're going to come back down to B flat 7, the four chord in this key. And those um, notes again of that arpeggio are B flat, D, F, and A flat. And then we're back home to F for two more bars. So that's our 12 bar blues. And um, that, there are many different permutations and substitutions that you can add to the blues. Um, but this is the kind of most simple um, version of the blues that hundreds, if not thousands, of songs have been written over. So to kind of break down just learning the root movement, I think that's always a really great place to start because then if you're ever in the midst of a solo and you kind of lose track of, of what the form is, you can always take a second to listen to what the bass player is doing and find your way back to where in the form you are. The rhythm we'll do, we're going to go bup, 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 bup. So that's uh, beat one and the and of two. So we're going to go through the blues just once, now just playing the roots. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. So that might be simple in this key, but I urge you to try and do them in all 12 because it's a really great place to start. You're kind of just mapping out what those 12 bars feel like and sound like, and soon you won't even have to think about where you are in the form because you'll just hear where the top of, of each chorus is, and chorus meaning one time through all 12 bars. So the way that we solo is often broken down to a number of choruses, a number of cycles through that form. Most commonly, um, the bass player is walking with quarter notes, which is slightly different than what we just played. So I'm going to come up with this little bass line that kind of um, also outlines the harmony, right? Because there's that whole arpeggio, there's all that information that we want to kind of get into our ear and onto the horn. So here's a really simple bass line, and I'm going to just start by showing it to you in the home key. And then when we get to bar five, we're going to transpose it up to the, um, the B flat seven and do the same thing. So um, it's a two bar um, pattern. So we're going to do it twice through before we change to B flat. So here's what the first four bars will sound like. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So that's the, um, the basic vibe that we're going for for this bass line. Um, so then, and actually, we're going to do the same thing in, um, in B flat. Um, but let's change the last note of what I just played. We're going to do a little chromatic passing tone to kind of smooth the transition between these two chords. So here's, here's the, the phrase again, and I'm going to go on to B flat. And there's going to be this little B natural that happens at the end of the, f of the first four bars. And you'll see how it leads right in. And bass players do that a lot when they're resolving to the roots. 
they'll pass through by half steps or by scale tones. But so here's, here's the, the first eight bars of the blues now. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. So, so far we've got two times through an F, one time through the bass line in B flat, and one time again back in F. Now, in the last, the third part of this form, the chords change more quickly, so we're not going to be able to do that to uh, measure pattern. So, um, when we get to the C7 chord, we're just going to arpeggi arpeggiate 1, 3, 5. So, C, E, G, E. And same thing on B flat. B flat, D, F, D. And then one more time through the bass line. So let's try that whole thing. This is the bass line over the 12 bar blues. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. Baseline. So that's one place to start. And we kind of already outlined that harmony by, um, by the way that the bass line walked through um, the chord changes. Um, but another thing that's cool to practice um, is what are called guide tones. And those are basically outlining the two most defining characteristics of each chord, which are the thirds and the sevenths. Because if we're in F, that A natural that we talked about, that is a major third. That's the interval that, from the root. And um, so outlining the third kind of gives us the sense of whether the chord is major or minor. And um, likewise, um, that E flat on the top, the seventh degree of the, the F um, chord, that um, gives us the idea of whether the seventh is major or flat. In this case, all of these chords are, are dominant seven chords, which means it has a major third and a flat seven. So um, a lot of the harmonic movement in jazz um, provides us this opportunity to outline these chords by alternating between the thirds and sevenths as the chords change. So if we start on our, um, we're going to start with the third. So we're going to start on our um, on A. We're going to do this up one octave from where we've been playing. Um, we're going to start on A, and we're going to pulse that same uh, syncopated pattern, the ba, ba. But now we're going to be on A. And then when it changes to B flat, we can just lower that note by one half step. And now we're on A flat, which is the flat seven of the B flat. So we're only moving a half step, but we're alternating between the thirds and sevenths. Then when we get back to F7 for um, bar seven of this blues, we can come back to A. And then when it gets to the C7 chord, we can go up one half step to the B flat. And then that's the seventh degree of C and then down one whole step back to A flat, which is the seventh degree of B flat, and then back to A. So we've got those three notes, and those are going to give us the, the real defining characteristics of these chords. And they're also a great place to go for when you're coming up with backgrounds, you know, if you're part of a horn section. Um, so let's try. this. Even this rhythm right now could be a good background behind someone's um, second or third chorus if you're playing with a group. So. Um, here we go. This is our, our guide tones starting on the third. One, two, three, four. component now. So we just did the thirds to the sevenths. But now what if we start on the sevenths? So um, that would be E flat on, in our home key. Um, so we're going to do the same thing where we'll, we'll stay on E flat for four bars. Then if we go down a, whole, a half step, that becomes the third degree of the B flat seven. So we're down to D for two bars. Back to E flat for two bars. 
then up to E natural for one bar, because that's the third of the C7, down to D for one bar, and then up to E flat for two bars. So we're going to do the other component of the guide tones. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. to practice um, the harmony and really kind of map out in your in your head and, and in your ears what one time through the form sounds like and what all those different changes feel like. And as horn players, we often don't really get to, to play the harmonic language like that in such a systematic way. We're usually in charge of playing the melody and then taking a solo, but learning what all the rhythm section is doing and, and the harmonic progression of a song is really crucial in learning and staying with the form when you solo. Um, and even if you do, I mean, a great place to start if you're learning how to improvise is the blues scale. Um, but you can still solo using the blues scale over this, but just having done that groundwork will help you hear the root movement, and that'll help you know when a chorus has ended and when it's time to pass on to the next soloist. So um, these are just exercises that you can do and definitely do them in multiple keys um, and you can do them on different songs as well. Um, but I wanted to demonstrate um, how you might now freely improvising use those guide tones as kind of arrival points to really show um, where you are in the form and also because it sounds satisfying to play those distinctive tones um, when you land on them. So I'm going to, I'm going to solo now. Um, and I'm going to try to make an effort to resolve to those guide tones whenever, I, whenever possible. So here we go. One, two, a take the um, bass line that we were doing and kind of riff off of it and alter the rhythms a little bit uh, beyond just the quarter notes. And that's also a cool place to start. You're kind of bridging the gap between the exercise and improvisation um, and hitting the changes in a kind of meaningful way. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> using the harmonic information you now have when you're improvising. Um, but there are no rules in improvising, so these are just things to practice to help you learn the form. And when you're, you know, when it's time to solo, you're telling your story and no one can do that but you. Thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. Um, I'll have some sheet music of uh, what I discussed on my lesson face profile. Um, I also offer private and group lessons through um, lesson face. And, um, not only on improvisation, but also general trombone technique and across many genres of music. Um, my name again is Natalie Cressman, and happy practicing.